Hi there, and welcome to this day in history for August 1st. August 1st is the 213th day of the year in the Gregorian calendar, 214th in leap years with 152 days remaining to the end of the year. Today's word is faux pas. Faux pas is a noun that means an embarrassing or tactless remark in a social situation. This comes to us from French and the literal translation is false step. And with that, we're going to start in the year 30 BC when Octavian, later known as Augustus, entered Alexandria, Egypt, bringing it under control of the Roman Republic. On August 1st of 527, Justinian I became the sole ruler of the Byzantine Empire. On August 1st, 1498, Christopher Columbus became the first European to visit what is now Venezuela. On August 1st, 1774, British scientist Joseph Priestley discovered oxygen gas, corroborating the prior discovery of this element by a German-Swiss chemist, Carl Wilhelm Scheele, S-C-H-E-E-L-E. -E -E. I'm presuming that is how we pronounce that. If I'm incorrect, please let me know in the comments. This is the birthday of American lawyer, author, and poet Francis Scott Key, best known for having written the lyrics to the Star Spangled Banner. His birthday is August 1st, 1779, and he lived to the age of 63. This is the birthday of American novelist, short story writer, and poet Herman Melville, born August 1st, 1819. Of course, his best known work is Moby Dick. He did write some other things too. Herman Melville lived to the age of 72. On August 1st, 1834, slavery was abolished in the British Empire as the Slavery Abolition Act of 1833 came into force. Although it did remain legal in the possessions of the East India Company until the passage of the Indian Slavery Act of 1843. Colorado was admitted as the 38th U.S. state on August 1, 1876. On August 1, 1893, a man named Harry Perky patented a product known as shredded wheat. <laughs> Happy birthday to shredded wheat <laughs> for all you shredded wheat fans out there. <laughs> on August 1, 1911, Harriet Quimby took her pilot's test and became the first U.S. woman to earn an Aero Club of America Aviators Certificate. On August 1st, 1914, the German Empire declared war on the Russian Empire at the opening of World War I. This is the birthday of actor, singer, director, and producer Dom DeLuise, born August 1st, 1933. He lived to the age of 75. On August 1st, 1936, Adolf Hitler presided over a ceremony when the Olympics opened in Berlin. This is the birthday of the fashion designer Yves Saint Laurent, born August 1st, 1936. He lived to the age of 71. On August 1st, 1950, Guam was organized as the United States Commonwealth when President Harry Truman signed the Guam Organic Act. The United States and Canada formed the North American Aerospace Defense Command, known as NORAD, on August 1, 1957. On August 1, 1961, U.S. Defense Secretary Robert McNamara ordered the creation of an entity called the Defense Intelligence Agency, known as DIA, the nation's first centralized military espionage organization. The former Belgian Congo was renamed the Democratic Republic of the Congo on August 1st, 1964. On August 1st, 1965, Frank Herbert's novel, Dune, was published for the first time. Dune went on to become the world's best-selling science fiction novel in 2003. Read the book, loved the movie. <laughs> The concert for Bangladesh was organized by former Beatle George Harrison, and it was held at the Madison Square Garden in New York City on August 1st, 1971. 
On August 1, 1981, MTV began broadcasting in the United States, airing its first video, Video Killed the Radio Star by the Buggles. Yes, I imagine it came pretty close. Radio still exists, though, but there you go. On August 1, 1984, commercial peat cutters discovered the preserved bog body of a man called Lindau Man at Lindau Moss, Cheshire, England. A bog body is a human cadaver that has been naturally mummified in a peat bog. The oldest known bog body is the skeleton of one called the Kolbjörg Man, found in Denmark, who has been dated back to 8000 BC during the Mesolithic period. The newest bog bodies are those of soldiers killed in the Russian wetlands during the Second World War. Now, how does this happen? Well, it has to do with the nature of bogs. This usually takes place in colder climates near bodies of salt water, and as new plant life grows in the bog, the older plant life is uh, pushed down, compressed, re you know, the new material pl replaces the old. And as the material underneath begins its particular form of decomposition, it releases humic acid, also known as bog acid, and this has a pH similar to vinegar. Now, the conditions in this lower level of the bog are frequently anaerobic, uh, which means without oxygen. This anaerobic and acidic environment keeps the flesh from decomposing in its normal way, and instead basically just gets pickled. Often the skin and the hair are preserved remarkably well, whereas the bones might be weakened in the acidic environment. It is a fascinating phenomenon for sure. Today's song is A Hard Day's Night by The Beatles, number one on August 1st, 1964. Written by John Lennon and Paul McCartney, it was released with a movie by the same name in 1964. The inspiration for the title came from Ringo Starr as he was giving an interview <laughs> and describing the situation in which they had worked all day and he'd started to say it's been a hard day and then he noticed it was dark and added the word night. A Hard Day's Night. A Hard Day's Night was the fifth of seven songs by the Beatles to hit number one in a one-year period, an all-time record on the U.S. charts. This one hit number one on August 1st, 1964 and held that spot for two weeks. Hard Day's Night by the Beatles. Link in the description. And I think that's going to do it for us today. Thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Feel free to share this video with a link in your email, messaging, or social media. If you enjoy this series, you can check out the playlist that contains these videos. I'll put a link to that in the description. That description lives on YouTube, so for other platforms, I'll include the link to my blog page that is called, no really. <laughs> you can also find me on Rumble, Parlor, BitChute, and Gitter. All those links in that description. Alrighty, that's all I can think of right now. Thanks again and I'll see you next time.